Johnny Dollar. Paul Keller, Johnny. Hi, Paul. Welcome to San Francisco. Unpacked your bags yet? Just about to. Well, don't. Hop over to Virginia City, Nevada. Wait a minute, Paul. I just got Virginia here. Virginia City, the ghost town that's no longer a ghost over on the other side of Reno. Our man there's Jake Walton. Well, what's the problem? The gold rush. That was a hundred years ago. Well, there's a new one right now. You're kidding. And with all the same problems, including a couple of murders. So fly over there and see Jake Walton. All right. <laughs> The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Greater Southwest Insurance Company, Home Office, San Francisco, California. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the gold rush matter. Expense account item one, $216 even for the flight to San Francisco and the hotel room. Item two, 1815 for a plane to the busy, noisy town of Reno. One of the gambling and divorce capitals of the West, as well as a business center for the mining and cattle industries. Item three, 50 bucks deposit on a rental car. And with the afternoon sun at my back, I drove south and east to Virginia City. Virginia City. Colorful, fabulous monument to the rip-roaring days of the famous Comstock Load, when a man's life all too often depended on how fast he could draw, on how well he could defend a rocky piece of desert land that he hoped would stretch out a vein worth millions of dollars in gold-bearing quartz or the heavy blue mud that was rich in silver. A lot of the old landmarks are still there for the tourist trade. Piper's Opera House. You pick up a key at the Bucket of Blood Saloon. The Crystal Bar. The territorial enterprise that carried the writings of Mark Twain. The gambling halls where instead of money on the tables, it was gold dust and nuggets. And on dark nights, I've been told, you can see the ghosts of the Bonanza Kings pacing the streets. Fair, Flood, and O'Brien. Mills, Gould, and McKay. A grizzled old character sitting on a rocker in front of the bucket of blood didn't even look up when I asked him directions. Well, son, Jake Walton's office is right there across the street, other side of the newspaper. Mm Hmm? Oh, yes, I see it now. Thank you very much. But he ain't there. Oh, I see. Um, you don't happen to know where I can find him, do you? Oh, I know where he is, all right. But uh, I wouldn't go there, son. Not if I was you. Why not? Well, him and the sheriff, they're out to the Scarlet Queen. That's a gold mine. The Scarlet Queen? Yeah, about halfway up to Six Mile Canyon over there. Mm-hmm. There's an old wagon track up to the pass. Well, can I navigate that wagon road in my car? Ah, uh, that's a pretty new car you got there. Real pretty. No, sir. Take a horse or a burro unless you got four-wheel drive. Where can I get a hold of a horse? Jake Blakely's stable down the end of the street. But, uh, don't you go to that mine. Why not? Well, there's been another killing out there, like there's going to be more of them. More dynamite accidents. Like the one that uh, done this to me. Did what to you? Ha. Didn't notice, eh? I'm blind. At Judd Blakely's stable, after a lot of argument that I should stay away from the Scarlet Queen, I finally got hold of a horse by forking over a $200 deposit. Then I headed up into Six Mile Canyon. A couple of miles later, I found the old wagon road to the mine. It was crooked and steep, and there was a narrow pass to go through at the top. But from the pass, when I let the horse stop there for a breather, I could see the mine below me. There were two or three weather-beaten shacks right next to a platform with tracks on it that led into a hole in the sheer face of a cliff. A couple of jeeps and a beat-up old high-wheeled truck stood in front of the line of shacks. And a group of men were hauling a body out of an ore car to load it onto a truck. I got off the horse and over behind a big boulder and nothing fled. Gunshot and come from my left and we're still coming and from someplace and somebody I couldn't see. At the next one, the horse took off. 
say I felt a little alone, a little helpless at that moment. It's the understatement of the week. With a twig of mesquite, I raised my hat above the protection of the boulder, hoping to draw another shot to get a better idea where to start shooting myself. Nothing happened. Slowly, cautiously, then I worked around to the far edge of the boulder and carefully looked around the edge of it. Holy... That was in back of me. Don't move, stranger. What? You swing that gun of yours around this way and you're going to be real dead. Well... Mister, you drop that little lemon squeezer you got in your hand, then up on your feet and turn around and face that rock. All right. Why not? Go on. Turn around. Face up to that rock with your feet apart. You put your hands up on it. You have the gun. Higher. Get those hands up higher. You make one move, I pull this trigger. You're the boss. You're darn right I am. Okay, Jake. Jake? Looks like you got him, Leona. It's a city, man. Told you it wasn't nobody from around the Comstock. Looks like you're right, Leona. So watch him, Jake, huh? Real careful. He may be a tricky one. You got a good point there, Leona. So's just to make sure he don't try any tricks. Uh When you have to stay alert, don't let drowsiness slow you down. Perk up. Perk up with no dose. The safe way to stay alert without harmful stimulants. Remember, when you're driving, working, studying, and monotony makes you feel drowsy. Perk up. Perk up with no dose. No dose. I saw Jake start to throw that punch, and when you know it's coming in from where you roll with the punch, and I rolled him, I turned and took him with me, and together we rolled on the ground. I grabbed for the legs of the girl, and down she came with me. Then I managed to grab a wrist, a handful of long hair with the man's head under my arm with all the pressure I could put on it. No, stop, I give up. Please, Mr. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, please, I give up. Me too. Okay. All right, now, I've got the rifle. Uh, uh, now, don't worry, mister. Don't worry. And you got a lot of muscle for a city man. You now. Yes, sir. Pick up that handgun of mine by the barrel with your fingers and bring it over here. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. like it says, Jake? Yeah, yeah, okay. By the barrel now and be careful. Here. Here on, Mr. Here. Jake, huh? Yes, sir. Jake Walton. What? And this here is Mr. Jake Walton of Greater Southwest Insurance? Yes, sir. <laughs> Me and Miss Leona, we was only up here account of this last accident of mine. Oh, no. And when we see you prowling around up here, we... Oh, huh? Do you mind telling us what you think is so gall darn funny? Well, I'm sorry, ma'am. Look, my name is Johnny Dollar. Dollar? Well, well, Leona, listen. Dollar, here's a man I've been waiting for. I don't care what... Oh, he is? I must say, uh, he certainly gave me a nice reception. Well, we didn't know. We thought you were the one has been making all this trouble up here. Oh, you did, hmm? Yeah, that's a fact, Johnny. And listen, this one today makes the second killing... There at the mine. Somebody's using dynamite at the wrong place in the wrong time. And, Johnny, it was one of those blasts that blew my Uncle Dave out of the shaft, and he's blind now on account of it. The blind man that I met in Virginia City in front of the bucket of blood? Yes, sir, Johnny. Dave Halver. That's what brought me here, Johnny, from off my dad's ranch to see if I could help him and help find out who's doing all of this. And when Jake and I heard the shots up here, who were you shooting at, Johnny? Hmm? Oh, um... Just a couple of rattlesnakes I saw. Him. Uh, this time of year? Mm-hmm. Well, to think I almost aimed the rifle at your head because of what I thought you were. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. Yes, yeah, so am I, Johnny. This gal can shoot the eye out of a gnat. Would have killed you, sure. And I guess nobody would have blamed her much, either. Knowing what's been going on and not realizing who you were, I was hoping she would hit you. That would have been terrible. Yes, you would. Now, tell me just exactly what's been going on around here, Jake. Yeah, well, look, I see the sheriff's leaving with Jerry's body now. So let's go down there to the mine, and uh, I'll show you. All right, let's go. <laughs> the Scarlet Queen, named after a shady lady of the 60s, the 1860s was a small but very old mine away from the main body of the Comstock load, but once considered a fairly profitable maverick offshoot of it. Now, watch your step, Johnny. 
There's a big vertical hole along here, and if you ever fell into it, then see it there? Yes, yes, I see it, Jake. Just keep that lamp of yours on the ceiling, and we'll be okay. Johnny, you want to kind of give me a hand? Sure, be glad to. Here you are. I'm still not exactly used to being around inside of these mines. They never did have any business opening up this one again. Oh, why not, Jake? It never will pay off. Well, Uncle Dave thinks it will, and he ought to know on account of it really ought to belong to him. Should it, Leona? Sure, if that crooked lawyer hadn't fixed it so now as it belongs to Ski Lambert. Well, I'm not so sure that lawyer wasn't right, and Leona. So Uncle Dave ends up working for him till that dynamite hits him down here and blinds him. Yeah, well, maybe it was like the New York Keystone Mine, the other side of town, that started this latest gold rush now. How do you mean? The original shaft was sunk back in 70 by some fellas who didn't even own the property. So all the owners had to do was wait until the shaft was finished, then take over. Oh, easy now. Now we go down this ladder to the second level. You make it all right, Miss Leona? Sure I can. You two go on ahead. Mm. All right, now. What uh, what started this new gold rush, Jake? Oh, talk about maybe the government raising the price of gold, I guess. A lot of the old mines may be opened up again. At least them as can mill out $30, $40 a ton or more. I see. And our last couple of rungs are missing now, so watch your step. I'm okay. I'm on solid ground again. Yeah, I should be glad when we get the elevator working again in this darn door. Oh, oh, what's it? Oh, oh. Well, what's the matter? Oh, thank wow. goodness you were here to catch me, Chuck. Oh, anytime, anytime, Leona. Oh. I'm afraid I, I'm too heavy for you. Uh, you sure you didn't do that on purpose? If I had, would you mind? I was hoping you had. Oh, now, set her down, Johnny, and let's get on with this. Would you mind your own business, Jake Walton? There on the second level, Jake led us to a spot in the tunnel that was completely shored in with 12 by 12s. Where an old side passage give way. There's no rubble on the floor Johnny, of the tunnel there. It looked as though it had been literally top. blown away, and the acrid smell of dynamite still lingered in the air. Yeah, a man would be in here working on these ties, Johnny, where they're going to lay track for some ore car. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, a stick of dynamite would go off. Right here, where it had no business. First one of them killed Harry Beller, another one blinded Uncle Dave. And then, just before you come, young Jerry Lambert, the nephew of the owner... Gets... Let me have that lamp a minute, Jake. Oh, sure. There's something here I want to... Oops. Oh, that gang it busted. Yeah. Yeah, all right, that's that. But can we find our way out of here now without a light? Sure we can. Jake? Uh, sure we can, Miss Leona, but... Uh, uh, yes? We better be mighty careful about that hole we have to skirt around up in the tunnel above. <laughs> sure, Johnny. This road back to Virginia is a lot shorter than the one you took. <laughs> a lot smoother, too. You call this smooth? You've never been aboard a Bronx, Johnny. Well, if it's any worse than this... Uh... Look, there's the horse that I hired. Better stop and get him. He cost me a couple of hundred bucks. Now, don't you worry, none. You go on back to the stable. And that reminds me. Where are you going to have supper and stay in overnight? We got an extra bedroom, Johnny. But so is Uncle Dave, Johnny, and I'm an awfully good cook. Huh, Johnny? Well, that's the kind of invitation I like, Leona. Good. Okay. I won't try to compete with a pretty gal. <laughs> but uh, I think I'd better stay with Jake. But why? That is, if I may borrow this Jeep for a while tonight. Oh? Well, sure, anything you want, but why? Just a little idea I have. Then later? Yeah. Later, Leona. Idea. Two or three of them. About who'd taken those pot shots at me out there at the pass just before Jake and Leona appeared on the scene. The shots had come from my left, the side nearest Virginia City. And that other tunnel Jake had mentioned, originally entering the mine where the dynamite had been set but now timbered off. Or was it really? That too was on the left, the Virginia City side. And more important, so was the shortcut. Yes, and using that shortcut this afternoon, somebody who'd seen me there in town could easily have beat me to the pass and been waiting for me. But who? And did Jake and Leona have some reason for not taking me down to the mine while the sheriff was still there? 
Uh, best darn apple pie you ever made, Martha. Well, thank you, Jake. Have some more, Mr. Dollar? No, no, thank you. I've, I've had plenty, but it was great. <laughs> well, then you men just run along and I'll wash up the dishes. Didn't you say you had to meet with somebody tonight, Jake? Oh, just, uh, some of the boys over at the Delta. Uh, if I can have the keys to your Jeep then, Jake? Mm oh, sure. Yeah. But wouldn't you rather use my sedan? After all, with a pretty girl like that, eh? Well, let's... Let's say the Jeep is more romantic. Item four, 680 for a powerful electric lantern and a small flashlight, just in case. Then I took off in the Jeep. Just out of the north end of town, I heard shots off in the distance. But who would be using a gun this time of night? I took the shortcut to the Scarlet Queen this time, and there I found the entrance to the side tunnel cleverly hidden under a pile of discarded roofing. And that slanting shaft was perfectly clear as far as I could see in it. I went around to the main entrance, into the tunnel there, down the ladder to the second level, and this time I looked at those heavy shoring timbers carefully. Yes, in one spot where the side tunnel would be, instead of a 12 by 12, was a little square of 1 by 12 on a hinge. A door where somebody could throw in a stick of dynamite and kill whoever was working in there. I hung the lantern from the ceiling. Then I heard it. Somebody was coming down that side tunnel. I touched the lantern to make it swing, to look as though I were there, and moving around. And then quietly I ran back and up the ladder, but as I reached the upper level... Did it get him? Can't see yet. Not until the dust clears down here, but must have got him. Then come on. Let's get back to town. Let somebody find him there in the morning. Leona and the old man. That's all I need to know. Want to give up strong-tasting cigarettes? Treat your taste kindly. With Kent. Want to give up harsh tasting cigarettes? Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Want to give up rough tasting cigarettes? Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. Yes, Kent, the cigarette that made the filter famous, lets you get away from cigarettes that sometimes taste too strong, too harsh, too rough. Because Kent, with the Micronite filter, refines away harsh flavor. Refines away rough taste for the mildest taste of all. If you want to get away from strong, harsh-tasting cigarettes, change to Kent. Remember, the finer the filter, the milder the taste. Treat your taste kindly with Kent. Smoke Kent, the Micronite filter cigarette. I take it you've been here all evening, Jake. Sure have. Haven't I? I thought so. You will have a beer? No. Nope. Come on, Jake. We have a job to do. The job? You borrow a length of rope and a gun from somebody? Got a piece of rope in the back of my car. And also a 30-30. All right, then. Come on. I still can't believe it, Johnny. And you'll have to see for yourself, Jake. Just be sure you do exactly as I say. Okay, Johnny, okay. Keep the engine idling to cover any sounds you might make. Right. Leona? Well, I, 
I was kind of hoping you'd drop around tonight. Why well, you come in? Uh, who is it, Leona? A friend of mine, Johnny Dollar, Uncle Dave. Well, well, well. Uh, how are you, Mr. Dollar? Why, you're the young fellow I asked me directions this afternoon. I can tell by the uh, voice. That's right. I'll uh, go in the kitchen and fix up a drink. Sit down, Johnny. Make yourself comfortable. Yeah, sure, boy. Sit down. And what do you think of this lively little, little town of ours now, eh? As I stood there in front of you, these casually, days, but as though I was simply going to the toilet and move it from one pocket to another, I drew out my thirty-eight. And as I did, he slowly, almost imperceptibly, started moving his hand toward a drawer in the table he was sitting beside. Nor did he raise his head toward me. You do what I said and stay away from the Scarlet Queen mine this afternoon. No, I went on up there, Mr. Halvern. You did, huh? <laughs> Shouldn't I? Because of what you said. Oh? About your blindness. Yeah? Yes. But a minute before you told me about it, you noticed I was driving a brand new car because you saw that I was. And that's what told me the blind act as a phony to back up your tale that you were dynamited at the mine you wanted for yourself by Hooker Crook. And your next victim would have been Skeet Lambert, the owner. Yeah? Don't reach for that drawer. Okay. Okay. Dollar. He doesn't need to, Johnny. Don't move. He doesn't, hmm? No. Because I got this one. And me, Leona? Chet. Well, this gun's aimed straight at your head. Then it's you, are. Oh, my hand! You broke my hand! Sorry, Leona, but you should have known better. Jake, you want to come inside and call the sheriff? <laughs> I don't know whether Leona was actually involved in the murders in the mine or not. I hope not, because she was a doll. Then, sometimes, they're the most dangerous kind. Anyhow, it'll be up to the courts again to figure it out. Expense account total, including the way back home to Hartford. Call it $700 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. If you drive a car, remember this. Almost anywhere in the country where you see the Sinclair sign you can save up to four cents a gallon on gasoline by using Sinclair Dino. That's because in three out of five cars, regular price Sinclair Dino matches the performance of expensive premium gasolines, costing up to four cents more a gallon. Drive with care and buy Sinclair Dino gasoline. Truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Fred Hendrickson. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Cliff Owen, Reynold Osborne, Terry Keene, Leon Janney, Rosemary Rice, and Sam Raskin. Music supervision by Gene Sines. Sound patterns by Walter Otto. Technical direction, Michael Shoskis. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking. This is Betty Furness. Every weekday, three times daily, I report to you latest items of interest in the woman's world. Dimension is my vehicle, and the CBS radio network is my home address and yours as we explore the dimension of what interests women today. World, nation, or neighborhood. Expanded CBS News covers them all on the CBS radio network. This is WRW Music, Albany. Listen, how old do you think this car is? 
Well, there's really no way of telling how old because a worn-out muffler makes any car sound far older than it really is. It's good to know that if your car sounds older than its years, your nearest Midas muffler shop has what it takes to make it sound its quiet self again in just 15 minutes. Midas has the specialists, the experience, and the famous Midas muffler you need. Stop at Midas muffler shops, two convenient locations, one half mile north of the shopping center in Latham or stop 26, Albany Schenectady Road. Open daily and Saturday 9 till 6, Wednesday and Friday till 9. calculated to keep you in suspense. In a moment, Act One of The Lost Ship, written especially for suspense by Irwin Lewis, and brought to you by the makers of Marlboro Cigarettes. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com. <laughs> 